Hey folks, this is Riker with a Diablo 3 Season 25 Monk Build Guide. This guide will be for one of the most powerful builds in the game, one of the strongest monk builds in the game, the Inna Mystic Ally Monk, which is being turbocharged this season thanks to the very powerful new items coming in Season 25, the Soul Shards. So in this video, we're going to cover the gear, the skills, and the playstyle that you want to rock this build. The gameplay footage you're seeing in the background is recorded by top player Northwar, and you can also follow along with the written version of this guide on maxroll.gg written by Northwar, and the written version will always contain the most up-to-date information. They can edit the article, I can't edit a video. Alright, let's start by looking at the gear with an overview of the Inna set. The two-piece increases the passive effect of your Mystic Ally and the base passive effect of your Mantra by 100%. A nice doubling there. The four-piece gained the base effect of all four Mantras at all times. You gain 5% damage reduction for each Mystic Ally you have out and your mystic allies no longer take damage. And then that six piece where everything is, gain the passive abilities of the five ruined mystic allies at all times. Attacking enemies creates your chosen mystic ally that lasts for 15 seconds, up to 10 mystic allies, and the damage of your mystic allies is increased by 3000% for each mystic ally you have out. And at full force we will have 10, so that'll be 30 thousand percent extra damage. Outside of the Inna set, another very important item for this build will be the Crudest Boots. Mystic Ally summons two Mystic Allies that fight by your side. They deal up to 200% increased damage and are able to attack with their active forms longer. This is triple damage. So we're going to have 10 Mystic Allies with a four piece that's going to be 50% damage reduction. Now factoring in the Crudest Boots doubling their effect, with all of our Mystic Allies and our Mantras, we're going to be getting 80% extra life, 40% extra all resist, and 56% extra damage. We'll also want the Bindings of the Lesser Gods Bracers. Enemies hit by your Cyclone Strike take 200% increased damage from your Mystic Allies for 5 seconds. And Split Fire Allies gain 5 times this bonus. We'll talk about the Fire Allies in a bit here. But we are going with the fire version of the skill. This is the Greater Rift Pushing variant. There are speed variants, there are bounty variants, there are Nephilim Rift variants, there's a group DPS variant. All those variants can be found on the max roll page. For now, we're going to cover the GR Solo Pushing variant. Now, the rest of the items that we're going to take will help this build. They're not mandatory, but if you want to fully optimize, then they are. We're going to want a Ring of Royal Grandeur so that we can equip the crudest boots rather than put them in the cube. So the Ring of Royal Grandeur, we're gonna put in the cube ideally. This is a ring that you can only get from bounty bags. We recommend farming Act 1 bounty bags to get the Ring of Royal Grandeur. We're gonna take some Spirit Guard Bracers for some toughness. Your Spirit Generators reduce your damage taken by 60% for three seconds. We wanna maintain this buff when necessary. And between the Spirit Guards and the Bindings of the Lesser Gods, Cube one, equip the other. If you have good spirit guards and bad bindings, equip whatever you have a better version of. We're gonna take Lefebvre's Soliloquy Pauldrons. Cyclone Strike reduces your damage taken by 50% for five seconds. More toughness, we wanna maintain this buff at all times. For situational damage and toughness, we're gonna take the Traveler's Pledge and Compass Rose Ring and Amulet combo. While you're moving, you take less damage while you're standing still, you deal more damage. Now this build is very rotation dependent. In order to get the most out of it, you really need to pay attention to your rotation. And so of course we're going to tie in a convention of elements. Gain 200% increased damage to a single element for 4 seconds, rotating through the elements so you want to focus on your fire window. But that's not the only window we need to keep up. We're also going to equip the two-piece Shenlong set, Shenlong's Fist of Legend and Shenlong's Relentless Assault. When you reach maximum spirit, all of your damage is increased by 350%, massive multiplier here. But you no longer passively generate spirit, and your spirit drains until you run out of spirit completely. So you have your Shenlong window and you have your convention window and you're going to want those two to align. We're also going to equip in our cube a flying dragon. Chance to double your attack speed when attacking. 
This double attack speed buff lasts for 7 seconds, and with every attack you make, there's a 4% chance that you trigger it. You don't have to hit an enemy though, is what's noteworthy. You can just punch the air. As for our legendary gems, we're going to want an Enforcer. This increases the damage of your pets. Our allies count as pets. We'll take a Bane of the Trapped. Increases the damage you deal against control impaired enemies. One of the most powerful, if not the most powerful legendary gem in the game. It's so versatile, it's so easy to ensure that your enemies are always under these effects. We're going to take a Bane of the Stricken. This is for GR pushing. Each attack you make against an enemy increases the damage it takes from your attacks. So the longer you're attacking an enemy, the more the damage you deal is ramping up. If you're doing 5 minute runs, do not use the Bane of the Stricken. This is for GR pushing when it's taking you long to complete a greater rift. For the gems in the gear, in chest and pants, diamonds for toughness. If you feel you want to squeeze out more damage, you can go for emeralds instead. In your weapons, emeralds until you get any soul shard. Once you've leveled up a soul shard to rank 1, in addition to its legendary effects, it's going to have a property of any normal gem that you put into a socket. But the ideal soul shard that you'll want to equip is the Dregs of Lies. You deal 25% less damage, but your pets, your mystic allies, deal 50% increased damage. That alone right there is giving us a 50% damage multiplier. Then at rank 3, you unlock a secondary legendary property. It's random between 1 of 3, but the one that you want is each time your pet hits an enemy, your damage is increased by 1% for 5 seconds. This stacks up to 100 times, and when you reach 100 stacks, the stacks quickly reset to 0. For our helm, we're going to take the Sliver of Terror. Again though, any rank 1 gem is better than going with what you would otherwise put in there, which would be a diamond for cooldown, because once a shard is rank 1, it does the job of any normal gem. We want the Sliver of Terror, because its legendary property is your cooldowns are increased by 25%. It sounds bad, but for every skill on cooldown, you take 12.5% reduced damage and deal 25% increased damage. Very significant damage multiplier that we can get here. And then the secondary legendary property that you want is your attack speed and critical hit chance are increased by 7% for each skill on cooldown. Very strong. All right, we'll go over exactly what we want on every piece of gear, but first we'll take a look at our skills. Mystic Ally, Fire Ally will be our main damage skill. Fire Ally is just the highest damage rune for solo Greater Rift pushing. For speed farming, you'd go with the Water Ally. We're going to take Cyclone Strike Implosion to pull in group enemies, as well as to activate our Lefebvre Soliloquy and Bindings of the Lesser Gods buffs. We're going to take Way of the Hundred Fists Assimilation. Each enemy hit with the third hit increases your damage by 5% for 5 seconds. We can get a significant damage buff by utilizing this. We're going to take Dashing Strike Blinding Speed. Dashing Strike for mobility and Blinding Speed in order to gain a 40% dodge chance for 4 seconds. So even if we don't need to maneuver around, you want to be popping this once every 4 seconds minimum just to keep that 40% dodge chance. Next we'll take Blinding Flash, Faith in the Light. The Faith in the Light rune makes us deal 29% increased damage for 3 seconds after using Blinding Flash. So we can't maintain this buff at all times, but because we're working in a damage window, we're going to want to work this in to maximize the damage we're doing when in our window. And lastly, we'll take Serenity Ascension. For 4 seconds, thanks to Ascension, you are invulnerable. This is on a long cooldown, and we're basically taking this so that we can ensure that we can deal damage through our window and not have to retreat and fall back. For our passives, we'll take Beacon of Etar, reduce all cooldowns by 20%. We'll take Seize the Initiative. Dealing damage to enemies above 75% life increases your attack speed by 30% for 4 seconds. This gives us a nice, strong buff at the start of combat. Next, we'll take Relentless Assault. You deal 20% more damage to enemies that are blind, frozen, or stunned. Because of Blinding Flash, that's going to synergize well. And we're going to take the Guardian's Path while dual wielding. You gain a 35% chance to dodge incoming attacks. So, playstyle wise, how do these skills come together? Well, you're going to look at your Convention of Elements and you're going to base yourself on its rotation. When you're entering the start of your physical rotation, look and see 
Is your Shenlong's spirit buff up? If your buff is active, then you're going to spam Cyclone Strike to drain your spirit down to nothing. This is to fully get out of your Shenlong's window so you can start building up your spirit again, building your way back to the Shenlong window. Remember, it activates once you reach max spirit, then your spirit drains, and once it's reached zero, either through you consuming the spirit or through the spirit running out on its own, then it starts rebuilding because the window is over. Once you're two seconds into your physical rotation, that's halfway through. You stop moving, stay stationary. This lets us start transferring our endless walk buff, going from defense to offense. Cyclone strike to pull enemies in on you and activate your buffs. Then hold down way of the hundred fists. Punch at the enemies around you, punch at the air if you have to, just keep punching. Then either two seconds into your cold rotation, that's halfway through, or when you start dying, activate serenity. We're getting close to fire here and we want to ensure that once we're in fire, we can activate our damage dealer. As soon as you hit that fire rotation, cyclone strike again. Once you are halfway through your fire rotation, then you pop Blinding Flash and instantly after pop Mystic Ally. And then everything should hopefully die. Once your Fire Allies explode, now you got a 10 second window where you start running to the next pack trying to lure and pull enemies together and start getting set up to begin this cycle anew. Now if you're having trouble staying alive, you can make some defensive adjustments to this build. For your passives, you can swap out Relentless Assault for Harmony. This gives us more resist. And you can swap out the Offensive Blinding Flash for either Mantra of Salvation Agility or Epiphany Desert Shroud. As for exactly what we want on every piece of gear, let's first start by talking about breakpoints. For this build to properly sync up our allies with our Convention of Elements, we need to achieve a minimum of 33% cooldown reduction. However, bear in mind that the Sliver of Terror is giving us a cooldown debuff that effectively is a negative 25% to our cooldown reduction. That means we need to be stacking 58% cooldown reduction because less the 25, that takes us to 33. So Beacon of Etar gives us 20%, that's already a nice start. Paragon points will get us another 10%. The Soul Shard in our Helm will give us 15%, better than a diamond. And then we'll get cooldown on our shoulders and on one of our weapons, and we're set. So, on shoulders, Dexterity, Cooldown, Mystic Ally Damage, All Resist. Our Helm, Dex Vitality, Crit Chance. Amulet, Fire Damage, Crit Chance, Crit Damage. Gloves, Dex Attack Speed, Crit Chance, Crit Damage. Our Chest, Dexterity, Vitality, Mystic Ally Damage. Our Bracers. Fire Damage, Dexterity, Crit Chance, Life Per Hit. Our Belt, Dex Vitality, Life, All Resist. Our Pants, Dex Vitality, All Resist. Our Boots, Dex Vitality, All Resist, Armor. Our Compass Rose. Damage, Dex, Crit Chance, Crit Damage. And our Convention, Raw Damage, Crit Chance, Crit Damage. On one weapon, Percent Damage, Increase Attack Speed, Cooldown, and our other weapon, percent damage, dexterity, attack speed. For our paragon points, max out move speed, then put everything into dexterity. Although if you feel you're squishy, you can put points into vitality until you reach about 1 million life. For offense, cooldown, crit chance, crit damage, attack speed. For defense, all resist, life percent, armor, life regen. For utility, life per hit, resource cost reduction, Pickup Radius, and then Area Damage. This build does not really benefit from Area Damage. For our Follower, we're going to take the Enchantress. For her skills, we'll take Temporal Pulse for the slow it gives, Amplification for the Elemental Damage buff, Powered Shield for the Armor and Damage Reduction, and Focused Mind for the Attack Speed. For her gear, we're going to give her the Smoking Thurible so that she doesn't die, a Flavor of Time, this emanates to us, pylon effects last twice as long. Nemesis Bracers to spawn enemy champions. An Oculus Ring so that when we kill an enemy, there's a chance that a Golden Pool spawns and if we stand in it, we'll deal more damage. Ice Climbers to make her immune to freeze and immobilize effects. And then a Mempo of Twilight, Talrasha's Chest, Witching Hour, and two-piece Canes for more attack speed. Since she can't die, we only have one priority for what we want on every piece of gear of hers, and that's intelligence. All of her abilities scale off of intelligence. So getting her more intelligence makes all of her powers stronger. And that is going to wrap up this video. But do be sure to stay tuned for more video guides.
Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider pledging on YouTube or Patreon and unlocking behind the scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it. Check out these other videos and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo content.